I am now joined by a man that improved to 8-0 and in his career this past Saturday night, UFC 218. Dom Reyes. Dom, congratulations on the victory. Uh, you know, they, they always talk about uh, the unexpected things that could happen in a fight. Anything unexpected happened in that fight that surprised you, maybe how Jeremy came at you? Uh, yeah, so uh, we're calling it the, the Grizzly Rush. I survived the Grizzly Rush. Might even get shirts made up on that one. <laughs> I mean, did, did, I mean, he's an aggressive guy. I mean, is that kind oh, yeah. of you know something you and your coaches in, in preparation for this fight? I mean, basically, had to your, your training partners had to kind of mimic that, so you kind of you know know what that there wouldn't be any surprises on fight night. Yeah, we were prepare, we were preparing for it. You know, we knew he was going to rush us, but he 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 ended up being uh, faster than I thought, and he came up on me quicker than I anticipated. So. And then he also went for the takedown, which is something I didn't think he was going to do at all. So, I mean, you adapt and you overcome. I mean, as you have, have thought about the fight, you know, we're a couple of days uh, since this fight happened. Is there any major, you know, memory that sticks in your mind uh, about the fight or fight week? Um, fight week was, was awesome, man. Uh, I, like, I was warming up with uh, Max Holloway and Yancy Medeiros. That was, like, one of my you know really cool moments that i'm gonna remember um just being around all those guys it was really cool to be around um from the fight i'm gonna remember you know the whole fight you know the finish those elbows that i kind of invented on the fly you know from the body triangle that was pretty cool i've been thinking about doing something like that for a while and i finally got a partner that isn't a teammate so i could let loose with those elbows you know, uh, there was, I think, a couple of times when you were laying those elbows that the referee was saying, you know, hey, watch the back ahead, watch the back ahead. I mean, when uh, obviously, you know, I mean, you know, you're you're in a good position where a, a fight ending could be coming. How do you how do you make sure that you, you don't potentially put yourself in a spot where you lose that position because of an illegal strike? Well, it was like it was like two different instances. So, like, there was one instance where I was elbowing him and then he he turned his head. And I, it came close. I don't know. It was close, but he he told me he warned me, so I I you know redirected my attack, and then he he rolled, so we kind of went to a new position, and then he warned me again, but then I ended up submitting him. So, I mean, I'm conscious about it. I'm doing my best to not hit him in the back of the head. I wouldn't want to get hit in the back of the head, but I mean, it happens sometimes. And obviously, you were early on in the fight card. I have to imagine after your, your fight's over, you're thinking, "Okay, you know what? I'm in line for this fifty thousand dollar bonus." What was the point when you said, "Uh, yeah, that's not happening"? Oh uh, shoot! I mean, I was the only submission on the whole card, so I, I I thought I was in the running all the way up until they announced it. You know, but hey, it is what it is. I respect the guys that won it. I mean, that like that was a heck of a night, man. I'm I'm honored to be to have been a part of that card and have a finish on it. When you see, you know, after your fight's over, you, you see, you know, the Yancey and uh, Alex fight, and you see the Gaethje and Alvarez fight, just as a fighter, what kind of goes through your mind when you're when you're seeing guys go to war like that? I mean, I'm not, I don't think of it like a fighter, I think of it like a fan, and I'm like, that's a, this is awesome. <laughs> this is a bloodbath. These guys are, are warriors. I really respect all of them. I mean, I respect everybody that steps in the cage, but those performances that were put on on Saturday all the way around. I mean, everybody fought their hearts out and you could totally tell the energy in Detroit was amazing. The the fans in Detroit were awesome. Uh, I couldn't have asked for a better, better evening. How is this experience different than your first UFC fight? Uh, it was a, it was a, it was a more star studded. There was a, it was a pay-per-view as opposed to a fight night. So there was more media, more attention on it. Uh, bigger names, more fans running around. It just, the, the overall energy just felt like it was amped up a bit. And, and of course, you're a guy that everyone knows when you're fighting, don't blink because you've, you've only made it out of the first round once in, in your pro career. Um, you know, it is, and obviously I think fast riser. Um, prospect is still, I think, a name that is kind of attached to you. But do you kind of feel like you're getting to that point where, you, you know, the, the prospect label should go off? No, I, I still believe I'm a prospect. I'm not. Um, I wouldn't say I'm a contender yet or anything like that. Um, I know I'm still a prospect. I still got a, a, a few more fights to get into before 
you know, people could really say, oh, yeah, he's 100% legit. I'm 100% legit, but people need to see it. And I understand that. So uh, I just got to get a few more fights and keep moving up the ranks, you know, one, one step at a time, man. It's exciting. But this is a division where it, it does not take long to get to a title matchup. You, you look at Vulcan. A, a year ago, he wasn't even in the UFC. And, and obviously now he, he's fight, fighting for a title. I mean, have you found yourself scouting a, a lot of those top 15 light heavyweights and, and is kind of, as you think about your next fight, you're looking at a guy that's kind of that, that lower top 15, top 20? Um, yeah, I mean, I'm focusing on the, the lower end of the top 15 and, you know, the top 20, like you said. Um, I'm kind of just looking at, I've, I've been aware of the entire division the, in the entire time, you know, I've been paying attention, but for me to grow and to continue to grow and take the steps I need without jumping too far ahead, um, I have, I think I should stick to the lower half of the, the top 15, top 20 area. In terms of growing, how do you feel you've grown as a martial artist uh, from this fight as opposed to your first UFC fight? Um, I got to display, you know, be tested with my composure, you know, get in a bad position and then see what I'm going to do with it. And I was able to stay composed and follow directions and work my way out of it and turn it around and get the submission. Would you say that's the biggest adversity you've had to deal with uh, in your career? Um, no, but in my UFC career, yes, <laughs> I've only had two fights in one. So, uh, no, I, I went the distance in one fight and I had, I had a gut, a gut check in that fight and that, that was the most adversity I've dealt with. But I mean, I'm taking the experience, I'm watching the film, I'm learning from wins as well as losses over here. I mean, that decision was just two years ago. Does it, does it feel like it's been longer than that? It kind of does. It, it kind of does, but it's, it's it's all just it's just happening. You know, everything's just happening like back to back to back. So there's not really much time to think about what has happened um, aside from watching the film and growing from it. But like looking back, every once in a while, I get like a Facebook like, "Oh, three years ago you did this," and I'm like, <laughs> "Like what the heck? That's crazy." <laughs> Like those football face, was already six years ago. Those That's Facebook crazy. memories are sometimes good, but they're also sometimes bad. Yeah, for real. Like, what have been? What have I been doing? <laughs> I mean, it's just. It's sometimes I see some of those memories. Like, oh man, I posted that. Oh man, that wasn't good. <laughs> we all and everyone can say that. They everyone yeah. has been through that. You, like you've posted something. Like I've got a buddy. He'll go out, and then next morning he checks his Facebook. And he's like, oh, that's bad. I got to delete that. Got to delete that. <laughs> but uh, made a good time. Yeah, but as you now think about it, obviously uh, this year is wrapping up. Uh, is there a timetable on when you would like your next fight to be? Uh, probably, probably March, around March. I think it would be a good time to come back for me. But I'd have to look at the cards, see where 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 you know where they're fighting, um, see look at guys who are available to fight. And then uh, set it up from there. They always talk about bucket list venues to fight in. Is there a bucket list venue for you? Well, I got two. I got uh, Staples Center and uh, Madison Square Garden. It, it, is it, it, just because you're a California guy, that's why Staples Center's uh, you know number one. Yeah, I get to play where the great Kobe Bryant played. Man, that's he's my my sports idol. So okay, that would be cool. Big big Lakers fan. Yeah, growing up my whole life, huge Lakers fan. So it'd be cool to go into that arena and, and play there. And then obviously Madison Square Garden, you know, I went to school out in New York, so I got to visit it and stuff, and you could just feel the energy in there. And mm -hmm. I'd love to go there as well. Any uh, any fights in, in the light heavyweight division that have your eye coming up here in the near future? All of them. <laughs> I'm watching all of them. <laughs> Of course, we've got we've got you know uh, we've got a card in California coming up this weekend. Uh, uh, you got some guys on, on you know that'll be on there. I'm sure you're going to be watching that. Uh, I'll be watching it. Uh, it, it, it. The main event: Cubs Swanson, Brian Ortega. I mean, how, it, do you see that going? Down? I mean, I like I almost think that's just going to be like a pure like craziness type fight with we T, T City and his submission game and yeah. I think it's going to be a, a freaking. It's going to be. I don't. I don't know if it goes a distance. It's going to be a fight of the night. Because those two are very 
skilled and explosive. It, it's going to be crazy scrambles, crazy exchanges on the feet. It's going to be a lot of fun. I'm, I'm excited to watch that. But of course, uh, let everyone know where they can follow you out on social media, so they can uh, you know get to know who you are, and uh, you know let, let them know kind of what's uh, you're up to these days. Hey guys, uh, follow me on Instagram at Dom Reyes twenty four, Twitter at Dom Reyes, and uh, yeah, be on the lookout for me, man. I'm I'm here to finish fights, so don't blink when you watch. Uh, I'd like to thank uh, my team, Cobra Kai, my management, Monte Leon, um, the Bullet Hole, Nutrition Edge, Victorville, and Stein Chiropractic. Dom, I and I'll look out for my shirts. <laughs> where, where can they get your shirts at? Uh, shoot, <laughs> I'll be posted on my social media. <laughs> that that's the easiest way. Hit, hit up Dom's social media to get those t-shirts. <laughs>